so now this is week two of the podcastrophe. Um, something also that's kind of interesting is Actman uh, with the All Skulls On podcast. I got somebody recently who said something that I found to be very funny. He said that the All Skulls On podcast is missing a skull. <laughs> Yeah, Actman keeps reaching out to me, and I keep being too late <laughs> to respond. Yeah, I mean, obviously you're... There's nothing, like, behind the scenes. Like, there's no, like, issue or anything. I think it's just a... a no, there is, there is no drama. Missing each Act, other. Yeah, uh, Actman and I, Kelly, we, uh, we have been talking in the DMs. No, we're buddies now. Uh... We're also, we're going to be playing Halo Wars 2 at some point, catch up, see how things are going, but... That's good. Yeah. Yeah, no, we are definitely, we're definitely buddies. Um, I So, a lot of my subscribers definitely know who you are, Fav, and I thought you might want to introduce yourself, though, for some who don't, or, or want to reject you because you said something they don't like, and that means you're dumb. Uh, hey, I'm Favin or Favin or Favin. I'm that kid that made a bunch of videos about why halo's bad i guess now um <laughs> oh you're the guy who hates halo because you don't like sprint that's me um i don't i, I guess I, I i talk about a lot of different things I talk about a lot of different games though but uh yeah i'm glad to be here yeah you did a very excellent uh video that i saw some of the call of duty subreddits because I follow a lot of the subreddits, like the Battlefield subreddit, Star Wars, and like just to see where those communities are going. And when your Call of Duty World War II video dropped, that was like torn apart in the Call of Duty subreddit. And it's funny because now here we are with the Call of Duty fans not being happy with the state of their game. <laughs> like they're voicing a lot of the things that you said before. Right. And that's that's kind of the thing. It's I, I may I've waited a maybe a week or two to make that video because I wanted to have a pretty good idea of what's going on. But that's still in that window of time where people are hyped about a game and, you know, they are trying their best to like it. Like most people, they buy a game, they spend money on it, they want to like it. You know what I mean? And someone tells them, hey, this isn't as good as you think it is. They don't, they don't appreciate that. But, but yeah. Yeah, that, there's that honeymoon phase. But I mean, you could look at, you know, Halo, my Halo videos a lot of the times for stuff like that, right? When I made a video on rec packs and a lot of people, well, oh, rec packs are amazing. <laughs> yada, yada. So it, it funds the free DLC. But, if we didn't give it money, we wouldn't get that free <laughs> DLC. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's very common and it, it does make me feel pretty good when I make a video and I say something <laughs> and it gets disagreed with. And then everybody like maybe a month down the line is saying all of those things and just reinforcing it. Yeah. And then you'll see people come <laughs> back to the video going like, this was spot on, like, holy crap, this guy yeah. was saying it early. But yeah, um, we'll, we'll see. Allegedly, the next Call yeah. of Duty is Black Ops 4. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, allegedly it's a Black Ops 4, and it's in the modern setting, which yeah. wouldn't make much sense considering the series had kind of been going from past to future to far distant future yeah, well, i mean it didn't really make much sense to go from black ops 1 which is vietnam and then somehow in black ops 3 we're in the future running on walls but yeah. it is what it is black ops 3 is so disconnected from the black ops trilogy like the the trilogy i mean world at war to black ops 2 that like black ops 3 i'm almost convinced wasn't a black ops game and they just called it that for marketing purposes well yeah i mean you could say that about a lot of call of duties like well just put call of duty on it Should yeah like their, their weird obsession for a couple of years with calling the spin-off games warfare mm -hmm. obviously to capitalize advanced warfare infinite warfare like hey you guys oh, yeah. like in modern warfare how about this future game with wall mm. running oh it's gonna be amazing <laughs> yeah the how do you feel sort of about it? now the infinite warfare is very, you know, interesting and stuff because the developers of that game, there's that famous interview with them where they were just like, we, we jumped on the bandwagon too late. By the time our game was already cooking in the oven, the enhanced mobility craze was over. Right. And we that's, couldn't have, mm -hmm. th that's why you don't jump on bandwagons. You know what I mean? Because games yeah. take, okay, competent video games take 
two, two and a half, three years, right? At least. I would say three years. Right. Three years, two years, you're like, oh, okay. Depending on the scope of the game, three years. You know, like, two, two years is perfectly reasonable for some games. Right, exactly. So you, you figure a competent game is going to take two to three years to make, especially like that's kind of Call of Duty. If, if you hop on a bandwagon, then you're technically hopping on a bandwagon three years later than whenever yeah. you're initially intending to get in on the action. So, so that means there's a good chance that bandwagon's going to ride off into the sunset and you're hopping <laughs> on you're and you're done. just falling on your ass. You know what I mean? Because there's nothing there. And that's the, yeah. that's the problem with Infinite Warfare. It's like people are like we're done with this we're tired of this we don't want this call of duty in space would be super embarrassing and they're like shit that's like exactly what we're making <laughs> yeah yeah well remember that that sequence in call of duty ghosts i mean i don't blame you if you don't remember it but where you're an astronaut soldier and you're shooting at evil people on a space station i think it was was that ghosts was that the I very think, beginning yeah. of ghosts that was at the very beginning of Ghosts, and I remember people actually made fun of that and called that Call of Duty jumping the shark because of how just absurd this was. So I'm surprised that they saw that as actually a good idea to take the franchise in. Yeah, especially like direction. Since, since Ghosts was made by Infinite Warfare. Like, the, I mean, Ghosts was Infinity made by the Ward. team that made inf the Infinite Warfare game, Infinity Ward. So for them to... They would have had that feedback. Like they would have had an opportunity to take that feedback in the hand, yeah. and they just they just didn't. Well, I almost I almost like I I and this probably is not the case. I always had this like tiny conspiracy theory in the back of my head that like around the time of Call of Duty Ghosts, there were the rumblings of Disney and Star Wars and Episode Seven and like. All this stuff, so I almost wonder, because when Infinite Warfare came out, I don't know if you've gone to games, you went to GameStop or anything, but there were, like, it was merchandise to hell. There were, like, those little, uh, I forgot what they called it, your ship that you have in that game. You could get bottle openers for that, toys, like, watch it. Like, it almost seemed like they thought Infinite Warfare was their Star Wars universe. Right. You know, in the big, like they thought that they were creating a Star Wars scale universe that they could milk forever within the Call of Duty IP. So I almost wonder if Star Wars coming back almost partially inspired the jump to full out sci-fi. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised with the type of logic that Activision likes to use over there, but it's like Star Wars is an established franchise that's been around yeah. for, for decades. It's, it's probably, in fact, I'll just go yeah. ahead and say it. It's the... <laughs> biggest ip in the world in my opinion like the biggest entertainment ip in the world is probably star wars um yeah i'd say currently right currently it, probably right. is and they're making like eight more movies right it just sells it just, it's so <laughs> easy to merchandise <laughs> they recently confirmed another trilogy I know. like disconnected from the ryan johnson trilogy yeah and then i think two tv series if i if i'm not mistaken or something <laughs> like that and it's just like okay well you're infinite warfare oh, you're french like what are no one even knows who you are like you're infinite warfare like you know your place uh, yeah right it's like <laughs> what are what are you doing like this is the ship from infinite warfare i wouldn't have fucking known that you know what i mean it's like i don't know yeah it's you're like, like oh, oh the iconic this ship from it's like that you level. put like, the iconic it's... ship from infinite warfare uh, oh. And you're trying to cash in on that Star Wars fandom, and you put it right <laughs> next to like the big pile of Star Destroyer <laughs> bottle openers, and you're like, hmm, yeah, which yeah, one yeah, am yeah. I gonna <laughs> buy? <laughs> yeah, the Darth Vader toaster that obviously everyone's gonna buy over your stupid shitty little Halo knockoff ship. Right, and they'll probably just think it's from Star Wars anyway. Like it's probably from one of the games or something. And then just well, like no one, will, no one mm. will care. How do you feel though about like the <laughs> the worryings? There, are, there's a lot of jokes in the Halo community right now about enhanced mobility. People are saying Titans are going to be in the next game, wall running, like all this stuff. And like obviously they're jokes, but like there is a layer of fear under the jokes because three four three has been very open about the fact that the next game will be enhanced mobility and will be pushing it further. <laughs> well. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's, you know, buckle up, folks. It's like, <laughs> just get get ready for another three years of, 
of this. You know yeah, what I mean? Th it's like the thing is, is the people who like that, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a handful who are subscribed to you that like enhanced mobility, and that's fine. Um, oh yeah. Guess what? It's your franchise now. Like people like me, <laughs> people like me, we're, we're out. Of the, we're out. You know what I mean? We yeah. we got we got finally pushed out. Um, it really wasn't from from me. It was a genuine. This whole time, I, I'm losing interest. Like I'm losing this franchise. I don't like what it's doing, and so it's just like it's it's not gonna make me happy no matter what it does, even if it tries to throw people like me a bone. And so it re really, it's yours. So if you're into that and you don't mind a lot of modern conventions, which is what Halo's been doing this whole time. If you like Crisis, you're gonna love the next right. Halo. If you like wall running and don't mind it, it's like I, I try and keep that in mind. Maybe there are people who will like while running in the next Halo game. And it's not 100% confirmed that that's going to happen We're, or anything. That's a generalization uh, right, about the next game because it will be enhanced mobility. That's just kind of the scapegoat for, oh, what are they going to add next? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, look, they couldn't possibly add kill streaks to Halo. Oh, oh they did. Shit, well, they at did. least it doesn't have aiming down the sights. Oh, it does. Well, wall running couldn't be added. Right, right. <laughs> that's like the next thing. They're like, there's no way they're going to do that. Yeah, but, there's no way they're that dumb that they're gonna do that, right? Um, uh, and what was the, the, yeah, yeah. But, I um, just oh, god damn it, <laughs> the, the sink. It, we yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. I just I'll never forget that Halo Four Game Informer article that came out that leaked, and people. It was so bad in in terms of how predictable it was, in terms of the way the direction they were going. Like almost everybody I watched videos on who were talking about it, they're like, this is faked. There's absolutely no yeah. way that yeah. they would do this. I mean, Spartan Ops, Spec Ops, can you get any, you know, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, yeah, there's, uh, we all know why it was called Spartan Ops specifically. Right. Um, right. Yeah, no, and it's, it's kind of like, it's almost interesting when you go back and replay Halo 4 and you see a lot of like, things in the design that are very classic halo surprise and here's the thing not that they do the formula well but that they're re surprisingly restrained considering how crazy 343 went with halo 5 like i'm so shocked that out of the gate they didn't just do clamber aiming down the sights like you know all this stuff well i think what they did well, first of all, th those things weren't popular yet. You know, Call of Duty, f you know, what is it? Modern Warfare, th those kind of boots on the ground Call of Duty games. Well, that's what was really popular, the loadout shooters. Well, if it, what I mean is gameplay wise, because in terms of gameplay, that was almost like, what the fuck are you doing? Why don't you have aiming down the sights in your shooter? Like, right. why don't you have vaulting in your shooter? Like Battlefield got into that with Battlefield 3. They added vaulting. Right. And there and are... Stuff. There, it's funny that we have ADS now, but back in the day, there were videos and, and topics of Frankie doing interviews where he said, Halo will never have ADS. ADS wouldn't work in Halo. Like, <laughs> so you, you somebody, somebody should dig those up and tweet um, them to him. For sure. For sure. I'm, I'm like 99% sure I didn't just completely make that up. Um, yeah. But uh, Halo 4 was a conduit for the ideas of its time right L the loadout <laughs> yeah. shooters were very popular then it, and that's yeah, what it was like a little, reflected a little condensed uh the bubble of all the tropes of shooters at that time right and it was so unabashedly is that a word am i saying it right i don't think yeah, so whatever we know what whatever you mean. <laughs> it just like so like it had no shame unapologetically it was just yeah, it was like, yep, yep, we're we're copying trends. We're copying you trends, like and that's where Halo 5 is. Halo 5 is the conduit yeah. for its time. What games were really popular right then? Like Destiny, Call of Duties were doing it. Titanfall was like the biggest name. Um, that, so that's what it did. So Halo 6, I don't, I actually don't think they're going to do that. Because if they did that, it would be what? You know, a hero shooter, right? Um, I would be actually genuinely <laughs> oh. surprised if they went through the effort of making it an even starts format in Halo 5, which, ha which a hero shooter is 
you know, completely the opposite of. So I don't, yeah. I, I feel like they feel like, oh, damn it, we can't hop onto that bandwagon. Like, that's just completely yeah. gameplay altering identity wise. Um, we're trapped. So, damn it, now we're, we're, now we're gonna have to stay oh. in the old trend. Huh. Fuck, we have to make a Halo game. Oh, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 guys, we'll just, we'll just make Halo 5 again. It's cool. Like, yeah. it, it, you have a perfect opportunity to be a trailblazer and start a new trend. Instead, I think they're going to hold on to a trend that they didn't start, that their game isn't popular for, that has nothing to do with the original identity of the franchise but they uh yeah. you know the the polling and, and whatever they 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 feel it's popular because you know whatever they think they're doing the right thing i mean obvious uh, obviously i don't think they're sitting there going oh we're intentionally not making more yeah, money no. here we're intentionally yeah, every... not being more popular than we could be like you know yeah, all the all the jokes people are like they, they hired people who don't like the franchise like guess what bungie hired people who weren't a fan of ce to, for halo 2's development like every studio does this you right, want to hire it's... an outside voice and, and pe we're all passionate about a singular franchise, but we need to understand that people who are working in the industry, they're looking for jobs. You know what I mean? They're looking just to, to be a part of a studio. Like, it, it, they may not necessarily be like, oh, I'm only working here because I love Halo. It's like, I'm, I need to, this is a great opportunity with an established franchise that's probably going to yeah. have a lot of job stability for my family. You know what I mean? And from yeah, three, the, four, the guy who, mm-hmm. All right, from, from 343's perspective, they're like, we're taking over. We don't want to get complacent with this new thing. So we want to bring in people who might add something new to the franchise, right? Uh, the problem yeah. is, is that they didn't add anything new to the franchise. <laughs> they just took everybody else's old stuff and, and yeah. put it in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't... One, it's, it's sad because... You know, I mean, we've been to 343. We know that they're not, right. like, stupid. Well, and it's it's also frustrating because it's, like, different departments within 343 seem to have a clue more than others. Right. And it, you know, like, yeah. It, it's crazy, like, and I think you can attest to this. It's crazy how many individuals you talk to there. And it feels like every single one of them gets it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I told you about uh, that one guy that I talked to for a little while after mm -hmm. the last time where he, he had some very interesting things to say about his opinions on his mobility. Right. And it's like, oh, like they're not a bunch of drones that want to kill Halo. Some of them get it. It's a pity that they're not in power. Right. The, and even the people who who are in favor of enhanced mobility, most of them who I've talked to, they're, they're at least understanding of the other position. And they always reference like, hey, you know, it's a big, you know, there's, there's how many hundreds of people at that studio. It's not up to, you know, one guy. It's not up to one art dude, or it's not up to one programmer. Yeah. Uh, I don't, honestly, I don't really know how their internal structure works. Um, I don't really know how like mandates are put in place and how you know features are decided upon and trickled throughout the studio i don't i don't really see a clear progression when it comes to those sorts of things and looking at videos they did like the sprint there's some inefficiencies i've kind of uh caught on to maybe a little bit but i, I just don't know well and something also to consider is the sprint is also their attempt to be like, it's fine, we're all a happy family here. Like, you know, it's the standard corporate, like it's it's a very, very controlled visual message. Right. The sprint is not 100% accurate. Um, and even then watching the sprint, there are still things like, this is your most controlled inside look at the studio and you thought that these alarming things were fine well it's, yeah it's it's not only that but the things they were showing to try and make themselves look like this really detail oriented studio <laughs> what if we turn truth upside down right, right. Well, i mean it, it it's fine i understand like they showed them like oh they're paintballing together how great is that like oh they got such great camaraderie but little yeah. things that I picked up on, for instance, when they were talking about the map design of Truth and how they they boxed it out, and then they um, they play tested it on the gray box extensively and got it almost perfect, and and then they sent it to Art, 
And then literally in the, in the thing, they're like, oh, you know, we got to send this to Art and hope they don't mess it up. And I'm sitting here thinking, like, I believe Art is important to map design. Like, I think it should mm-hmm. be there at the forefront of the design because Art inspires design aspects. Design aspects inspire Art. You look at the wheel in Zanzibar, that wheel isn't there if – in, in terms of what it does for the gameplay of that map, if it's not involved right at the beginning, right? If you're just gray yeah. boxing and you don't have that that art in there at the very beginning, you don't get to make maps well, there's, like Zanzibar. There's that. There's that. Um, it, we were playing Call of Duty World War Two on the Xbox One, and there's that one map. What's it called? The uh, f- ship gun or something like what flat was it cannon. Flat cannon. Yeah, flat cannon or something. And I remember we were playing, and it was just like we were silent for a little while because we didn't know what to. S- we were just like focusing, and then you were just like, "Why the fuck is this map called flat gun? Like that has nothing to do with the map design. <laughs> like, oh look, a flat gun. Like, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, you know, like block it out, and it would just be like a boring <laughs> map. Like the flat gun is completely aesthetic." But, but that's <laughs> that's that's completely rings true for basically every map in Halo Five. You, if you look yeah. at like you watch those sprint episodes, and basically the and I don't know a hundred percent because I don't work there, but it is portrayed that three four three just gray boxes their maps and ships them to Art and say, hey, fi- figure out, make this look cool. That is to me yeah. if. And I'm not in charge and I don't know how to run a studio, but I would want designers and artists standing side by side and inspiring each other. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I think of I think of the way Marty O'Donnell, who was in the music department and the sound design department, he would also sit in with the level designers and play through the levels and give them suggestions. And that's, that's a great that's another great example of that kind of idea. Like there needs to be a cohesion in the studio there needs to be like a united focus not just oh i hope their vision doesn't screw up my vision when i throw this gray box over to their direction and 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 to be fair i also get that bungie had the the fortune of having like 40 or 50 people where 343 has like 500 people where it's like you can't just have like 500 people in a room and I, and I, (laughs) and i i totally get that um but I, I mean, I even know. Bungie nowadays, you see, you hear about the issues internally at Bungie where it's a studio with the old world mentality of like the early Valve days where right. it was just like basically a bunch of dudes in a garage making a video game. And now it's uh, like over 800 dudes in a building. And right. because of that, there's disorganization because they're not structured more corporately. Right. But I, I mean... Uh, again, it's hard for me to say, oh, this is how Bungie did it, and this is how 343 did it, but just little yeah. bits and yeah, pieces yeah. That, that I can work. take away. Um, and, I mean, the thing is, is that that idea that with the gray box and then sending it to art, that, that, that is reflected in their map design. Can you go well, through a hmm. single map in Halo 5 and think to yourself, <laughs> oh, boy, this oh question. they couldn't have reskinned this layout as something else? Like this yeah, couldn't no. just as easily be a UNSC map, or this couldn't just as easily be a four. Empire, map. Empire specifically, I feel like if you were to give it a Covenant makeover, it would almost it, it plays more like that one map from Halo Three. That's what is it? Is it on like a gas refinery? Um, are you talking about Covenant themed? No, that, it's, no, that's uh, that's not that's not Halo Three. That's Halo Two. Yeah, I'm looking up Halo. I think Halo, it's a DLC I think map. it's Halo 2. I think it's Colossus. That's the No, no, no. no. This, is definitely, this is definitely a Halo 3 map because I fucking hate it so much whenever it comes up on uh, the MCC, it whenever Citadel? people vote for it. Oh, here it is. Hang on. Where is it? Fuck. It's in the Mythic map pack. Um... I'm, I'm looking is up... Is it like sand. the little... Small... Assembly. Assembly. Oh, assembly. Okay. I fucking hate that map, but <laughs> Empire, I Empire, give it an assembly style makeover, and I could see it. Like it, it would be fine. But I mean, think Nothing of the layout change. of the map. Does can couldn't that just be anything? You know yeah, what I mean? Very, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's it's like truth with a couple like with the the middle gar like walkway thing just kind of broken up into a couple of pillars that you can clamber across. Right. But that it's like. It's so clearly to me, like it was just shapes. It just it's just <laughs> shapes. Yeah. And then they skinned it, like they put yeah. a skin over it. And I, here's the thing: 
I, I, I'm someone who thinks map design is like one of the single greatest avenues for innovation in a game. Um, so I, I dislike that method, but I'm also not going to say that that isn't always viable. You know what I mean? I think map design just is a map. really fluid thing where sometimes it's inspired by a piece of art. Sometimes uh, it's inspired by a gameplay idea or a concept. And sometimes you're like, you know what? I'm just kind of throwing, throwing, going around in this level editor. And I think I've made a really cool block out idea. It can be that. It can. But it shouldn't be that every single time is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's. Uh, yeah like i mean obviously if you've got to have the maps that it's like okay this game needs to ship with 25 maps a couple we're gonna have to rush and it's like there you go just block them out send them to art have art pretty it up but like some of them the art needs to influence the design exactly a little and, bit more and if, if you're blocking things out then art art like art can be involved in the gameplay as well like different pieces can disrupt sign sight lines like an artist's mm. creation can be a part of the geometry of the map in fact it is that's why they were so worried about what the artists do screwing up what they had already felt like the game the, the map should play like um mm -hmm. i mean to be fair though with that sprint episode how much of that was inserted as a joke like haha hope art doesn't screw this up like for oh, all we know a, off screen they were joke. yeah it, it was a and, joke and it was but it's just telling that it, it's telling that that is like a joke yeah it's like that should that be a joke it's like if if that artist was helping you make the map in the first place well, I don't it's know. annoying because do you remember in that campaign sprint episode they were talking about uh tsunami tsunami city tsunami siege what did they call that um and they were prototyping a wind system where like you were fighting on a pole like they, instead of having stable pillars that just didn't move and you were just clambering from pillar to pillar like the actual sunion level yeah y it was like they were actually moving up and down with the waves and there would be wind and you would be able to know how strong the wind is by looking at the waves and that would impact grenades and the way plasma bolts would flow like stuff like that where that would dramatically alter the gameplay uh, right but i mean that would take too much work <laughs> <laughs> that, that would that would take too much work um it would be too fun but at the no, same but time like, like but stuff like that where that is the most creative idea i think i've ever seen out of halo 5 and yeah, and Gears of War 4 did it. <laughs> Gears of War yeah, 4 Gears did of... basically all of those things in terms of the weather effects and how the sandbox changes when they're involved with those weather effects. Um, well, that's, yeah, no, and I mean, obviously everybody points to the Kraken as being the, like, a gigantic, you know, the Kraken might as well have a, had a gigantic sign taped to its back that oh, yeah. says missed it's opportunity. It's a huge waste opportunity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, creatively. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's so many things I see in that sprint video, in all of those sprint videos where I'm like, oh, you. guys. And, and the thing is, is, they're sitting there. I'll never forget the one where it's like four dudes sitting in a room with like a remote and they're flipping through all of like the weapon skins that are going to be in the game. And it's, it's just like super unironically filming this team, look at weapon skins and be like, no, I don't think this one should have the rare rarity scale because this one looks a little cooler than the legendary one. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, this is the type of shit we got people doing over there. It's like, I don't know. T to me, yeah. it's just, they're filming that like it's this super awesome thing. Like, oh wow, look how badass the game's gonna be. And I'm, I'm sitting here disgusted watching people determine the rarity of weapon skins yeah no or like i mean and something also that i think a lot of people misconstrue was the uh or, or kind of misunderstand is that one sequence where they were talking about uh sticky aim and bullet magnetism and stuff it was a guy's halo 2 did the exact same thing um like people seem to focus on some of the more concerning like you just said right there where it was just like wouldn't it be cool if we did this wouldn't it be cool if we flipped midship upside down and just had that be a map like some of that where people are focusing more on the boring g generic dev stuff that every studio does yeah and but uh, to be fair that's what they showed us with the sprint 
You know what I mean? That's <laughs> those are the things they showed us. The boring, stupid dev stuff. There's no telling how many things get said on a day-to-day -day basis. We just don't hear it. Like, uh, yeah, there's probably when there's weapon skins, there's people sitting there talking about, you know, what rarity should it be? How do we, you know, format this yada yada? I don't know why you'd show the, us that part. You know what I mean? I don't know why you'd show us the part where you're deciding which maps would work if you flip them upside down. I don't know. But that's what we see. That's the the sprint is our closest insight into the inner workings of that studio. You know what I mean? The, and I understand I, that's mm. not accurate. That's not how it is overall. But you can't fault people for taking what you show us and then pointing out flaws in what you've shown us to that that you guys are. I just got a message actually from someone this very second that said Bungie currently something that's going on right now. <laughs> this is like breaking news. Uh, Bungie is paywalling their forums in order to post on the Destiny forums. You have to own Destiny 2 and it's DLC. Huh. That, that's <laughs> okay, pretty so bad. I mean, Des Bungie's... Oh, boy! <laughs> Bungie keeps shooting yourself in that foot. Well, like... I, the thing is, is like <laughs> Bungie, even with Halo 3, had some dumb stuff. Oh man, you remember know. that dumb thing Luke Smith said about Halo 2 fans on the Bungie forums that got him in a lot of trouble? Oh, I, I don't, like, do you remember Bungie Pro, how you had to pay to share with your friends? It's, oh fuck, I man. Mean, it's oh, like God. Bungie's always done some... But the thing is with, with Bungie Pro is it was attached to a concept that kind of didn't exist. You know what I mean? It's like that idea of, of being a really scamming. social game and all of these like content uh user created content pieces like they monetized that but it was kind of uncharted territory in a way and well, it was like horse armor right not not to say it's like not good like not to say it's good like bungie pro was kind of ridiculous i feel like sharing with your friends should be a default feature yeah but it just goes to show you that Bungie hasn't always been perfect, but yeah, that's pretty Bungie stupid. Has, Bungie has a very interesting track record that people are starting to dig up of like, hey, maybe this is not like new for Bungie fucking over their player base yeah, in and I mean, weird ways. And I say this as someone, they made my favorite games of all time. Yeah. They did a lot of stuff on accident. You know what I mean? It's like a lot of yeah. the things that people love about Halo... Bungie did on accident. Like, they're like, oh, people like that? <laughs> oh, shit, okay. You know, things like yeah. the pistol being, too, that wasn't an accident, but like the pistol being too powerful, I think it was like a last minute thing. And it's like, oh, yeah. it, it happened to work. And you know, the, the entire concept of the utility weapon, which acts as the foundation for what competitive Halo was for decades, that was an accident. You know what I mean? That that wasn't really yeah. an intended gameplay idea. Or, or um, you know, even like, and this is definitely more of an area of my domain, which is, um, artistically, the Halo 2, you know, the jackal being like a bird, mm -hmm. a weird bird thing with bug eyes. Um, they changed the jackal's model on like the 11th hour for Halo 2 because in Halo Combat Evolved, the jackal was supposed to look like a gecko, like a weird lizard thing. Uh -huh. Like it had weird suction hoof things for feet and you know it had the big bulb fingers like it was supposed to look like a lizard or a gecko and then for some reason in halo 2 at the 11th hour they decided they didn't like the gecko anymore so they changed it to the bird uh and apparently a lot of people weren't happy about that <laughs> originally i mean you can because uh, mm -hmm. you can just go through so many different things and just just a bunch of getting just getting lucky over and over and over again i think by the time they got yeah. to halo 3 it's like okay well yeah we these these were pretty lucky but i think we can kind of get it now and even then in halo yeah. 3 they were like you got lucky again got lucky again you know well, what i mean halo 3 halo 3 it's interesting i described this to somebody as halo 3 feels like a facsimile of halo combat evolved in halo 2 sandbox if that makes any sense like Halo 2 was super polarizing at release for in inside the Halo community. I mean, it's well liked and stuff, you know, it's considered a classic, but it was polarizing enough that Bungie didn't want to ever do that again. And so with Halo 3, that was made by their internal B team and they went out of their way to try to take Halo 2 and make it play more like Combat Evolved. Well, Halo 2 had a nightmare development 
also. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. Halo three. <laughs> I, you know, I think it had a, it, you know, it, it still had a lot of its star power attached to it. You know, it still had a lot Halo of Halo two. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't really know. I dig Halo three though. <laughs> I yeah, I love Halo three. No, and I. I think also sometimes that's very sometimes something that's very like depressing, you know, about being a Halo fan, and sometimes why people are like, why don't you discuss that? Why do you like? Because I'm I feel like discussing breaks down your favorite IP and makes you not a fan of your IP anymore. Right, and and the thing is, is like we just spent the last what five to ten minutes talking about this is why Bungie sucks you know this is this we is love Bungie all these problems <laughs> that is... Halo had every good thing about Halo was a complete accident it was like, a complete lie the series always sucked uh, no I mean <laughs> you know what I mean it's like yeah it, it doesn't it, it doesn't suck you know you know what I mean it, mm. it doesn't suck but <laughs> if you're if you're being honest with yourself it's like a lot of the things you love about it you love because you know death of the author right because the person who (laughs) built those things didn't intend them for you to use them the way you're using them and you can you can find all sorts of instances about that now that doesn't mean to say that Bungie didn't know what they were doing and Bungie had a lot of great ideas too ideas that did work as intended Uh, you know I really like for instance Bungie's level design Um, I'm a big fan of their level design but especially with the way their sandbox functions that's kind of an accident a little bit yeah yeah no like some of the well and the fact that like especially with halo 2 and halo 3 like that within the competitive environment they have to make so many adjustments and sacrifices and stuff to make it more reliable Mm mm-hmm kind of speaks to how broken certain aspects of their sandbox were if i remember right mlg had to basically like strong arm bungie into their mlg playlist for halo 3 like bungie refused to do the mlg playlist with the enhanced speed and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um and mlg basically had to strong arm them into doing that yeah and i i feel like i remember an interview again 99 percent sure i'm not making this up um, where Bungie literally said, we're giving you all these options so that if we screw up, you can fix it. <laughs> yeah, with the wasn't that how they pitched Forge mode? Some, yeah, it could be like, oh, did we put the weapon in the wrong place? You can fix it. You know, did we make the game a little yeah. too slow? You can bump it up by 10%. You know what I mean? Um, something, something that I was actually going to ask you, and this isn't, I guess it makes sense, but... So the argument for some people is that Halo Con- Halo 5 is more modular in the custom game settings than previous Halo no. games <laughs> because... Now, hang on. Here's... So basically, if you wanted to, you could make the closest approximation to how classic Halo played. Or if you want, you know, by disabling... Like, basically, you have the option to make it play like a classic Halo game or not. You can't because you can toggle sprint. You can talk. Tog- you can forge classic style maps. Like right. So that's that's not modular um, because the base mm. gameplay isn't modular. Like stripping the base gameplay away doesn't, doesn't make, make your game modular. The reason Halo Two, Three, One, those games were modular is because it had a really simple base gameplay. Um, and because it was so simple, you could put it in a variety of situations, uh, and it was easier to mm-hmm. design for. You did you had very few variables that you had to account for, and then you know you could um, you know you, you could obviously boost the speed ten percent. You could slow down gravity and stuff like that. But the, the thing is, is even if you do those things, your maps aren't made for that speed or that gravity, et cetera. And and the thing is, is like. People who call Halo 5 modular because you can strip those abilities away, they always forget that if you take those abilities away, you are playing in a game that is not made for those abilities to be taken away. You are still playing in a game that was designed from the ground up for those abilities to be there and be there present at every time. And so, yes, you can technically forge new play spaces, but all of the existing play spaces, they don't work. 
You know what I mean? How is that modular yeah. when it's like, oh, yeah, you take those abilities away. See, super modular. No, because now the game doesn't work. How is that modular? You know what I mean? And then and then like sort of no. And I, I agree. But then like the argument could be made that, well, what if Halo 6 played like classic Halo, but in the options menu, you could enable clamber and sprint and stuff like that, like custom games. To me, well, I think at, at the roots, that would be a modular game because, yeah, if you technically want to add stuff to it, that that's something you could do if you want to add something onto your like, already core okay. simple base formula. But then you keep in mind, all of the maps made for that game won't be made for enhanced mobility. And so you'd still have to do the same thing with the enhanced mobility features. You'd still have to design maps for it. And the weapon sandbox wouldn't be tuned for the new mobility options and the speed of the game. Couldn't, couldn't you make the argument then that playing custom games, if you increased the base movement speed and lowered shields that broke the original game? Because the guns and the maps weren't designed to be played like that? Well, no, that to me that's part of of the modular design like that wasn't supposed to be the halo for anybody right that's SWAT. you're talking about swat correct um well no 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 like just dicking around in custom games well, well sure and you're not going to have you know the optimal halo experience when you do that but halo is flexible enough to support that so so here's the thing and, and here's uh -huh. where i kind of think you're getting at if you take the ability This isn't of, me, by the way. This right, isn't right, what right. I this believe. Is devil's this advocate. is devil's yeah, advocate. You know, yeah. If you take those abilities away and you have what resembles a classic experience, technically, can you do that? Yes, you, you can. You can take those abilities away. But the problem is, is people are trying to use that to justify people like me sticking around. You know what I mean? They're using that fact that, oh, well, you could just take all the abilities off and play. Well, the game isn't optimized for, I don't like enhanced mobility. You know what I mean? This mm. isn't just a little side thing, which it might be for you. To me, that's what I want the entire game to be. And it isn't when the game's not optimized and built for it. So, you know, you, you remove shields from SWAT and you start everyone with a BR. That's just a game mode. You know what I mean? It's like, that's not how the rest of the game is built. That's not how it's supposed to be built. And that's, it's the same if you did that for classic Halo in a game that typically has enhanced mobility. It's like, okay, great. We have one playlist now or something, and it's not even optimized. The people who want a classic Halo game, they don't want that. Like they, they want, they want the aspects that you can tweak to be like external as opposed to you needing to drastically remove abilities or add abilities to the base player right right and another it's not even just gameplay that goes into making a game modular it's also just overall design first of all i think gameplay is important because the simpler it is the more scenarios you can put it in the more versatile oh, it is that's that's almost like yeah that's almost like an objective truth the right. simpler the gameplay is the more interesting scenarios you can create around that game right play. because you don't there's less variables that you as a designer have to account for but taking yeah. it to the next level it's how all of the systems interact with each other. And you look at Halo 5, it's not modular at all, right? Warzone is completely detached from Arena. Features like Forge can't even be used in, in Warzone, you know what I mean? So you, you have a split in your um, multiplayer component game is, of the game. And then the, even the campaign plays dramatically different from the multiplayer B meaning arena which warzone also plays different from the other two right. like it's like and the thing is is you look at halo 3 and even reach I, I believe but halo 3 you have like your theater what can theater be used for literally everything everything right? you can watch old forge clips you know what i mean you can watch campaign clips you can you can watch multiplayer games big team games anything you can use theater for anything it, it ha it's modular and it works with all of the rest of halo systems uh, you know, multiplayer, all of the modes that work in competitive 4v4 maps also work in huge big team battle maps. All of those modes can work, and they're also very um, adaptable and versatile to where you can change them and create hundreds of game modes out of them. That's very modular. Um, you look at Forge. Forge can be used on small maps. It can be used on big maps. It can be used to make maps you've never had before. All of those systems were very modular and versatile 
and complemented each other system in the game. In Halo 5, while in certain avenues you have a lot of options, like I'm not going to act like there aren't a lot of arena options and that you can't do a lot of cool stuff with the enhanced abilities, turning them off and whatnot, but theater is completely broken. Um, and I don't even, <laughs> you know what I mean? Theater's completely yeah. broken. The Warzone component is completely detached from the arena component. Um, the progression system, the rec packs and the rewards you get, some of them are cosmetic and that goes for everything. And some of them are specific to one mode only. Um, Forge can only be used in arena. Forge is uh, inaccessible in the Warzone component. So you have all of these different disconnects and various pieces that are not connected together. To me, that is not a modular game. Yeah, that was no, a long way to yeah, answer. <laughs> no, I, I I got you. Where you're like you're you're dramatically altering core aspects of certain game on of certain aspects of the game. Like it's like it may as well be an open source game at that point, because mm -hmm. like the core game that you built cannot support that level of variety. Like if Halo Five was. Like, Halo 5, if it was modular in the style of classic Halo, then every mode would be 100% supported by the enhanced mobility, but it's not. Like, Spartan Charge has to be disabled for Oddball. Because it breaks Oddball. Like, if, if it wasn't for the fact, you know, so Oddball had to make a sacrifice gameplay-wise. Uh, to ac accommodate the enhanced right. mobility and, and stuff. And that's just uh, because you have all of these factors. And really, that's that's cheating because the developer's taking a base mechanic, a mechanic that is always present, and just saying, oh, f let's just remove that. And instead of... Uh, that just goes to show you the issues that a developer has when they have all of these different things that a player can do and that they have to account for when they're, they're designing not only maps, but how game modes function. Yeah, no, I totally got you. Sorry, I'm responding to someone right now. <laughs> yeah, that's what's going yeah. on there. Yeah, I wasn't expecting a, a heavy hitter question like that one, so hopefully I didn't stutter and stumble over my words too bad there. No, dude, you were on point. Because that, that's a really complicated question with a lot of factors and with a lot of counter arguments that could be made against it as well. Uh, almost done. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, it's got a lot of, like, counter arguments and stuff, and a lot of people who maybe don't truly... Uh, like, oh, man. <laughs> it, it's very depressing that we're probably never going to see, like, a true Halo game ever again. I mean, if... You know, I see a lot of people arguing, like, oh, you guys had Halo for 10 years, let us now have our enhancement. But it's like... We haven't had, like, a normal Halo game since Halo 3, man. Yeah. Like, Halo ODST was, you know, a side thing. Like, Halo Reach was not a good Halo game for classic Halo fans. Then we had Halo 4, then Halo 5. Like, you, no, we want Halo back. It's been too long at this point. I, I know, and that that's the thing. It's like, go play... The, 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 the common thing people say is just go play an old game i don't think you realize the game that is old to us it's it's over 10 years old it's hard to go back to a game that's over a decade old that by now it justifiably so doesn't have a player base it's been played to death everything there, there's nothing to discover you know we want new things too and that that's another misconception we don't want old things we want new things just built with this mindset you know, a sandbox based Halo, basically. Yeah, no. Yeah, like I, I think sort of of um, a really, you know, and a lot of people like to also say that um, Halo 5 has the most like it, it has the most. Uh, no, the, the more interesting the gameplay is that adds more opportunities and stuff like, no, it doesn't. You know, I think of the Scarab battle in Halo 3, like the first Scarab battle, where you have the different opportunities. If you're still holding on to that sniper rifle that you had, 
from earlier in the level of the storm, you can snipe through the cracks uh, in the scarab and hit the core. You can go onto the crane. You can launch the ghost off of that ramp. You can take a rocket launcher and take down the legs. Like those are options and those options are there because the game isn't limiting itself because you can just thrust, jump, dodge all the way onto the scarab right. and destroy the and, core. And your point that you just made right there is right on the money. And it's basically the crux of the whole enhanced mobility uh, versus sandbox environmental interaction based games. In that Halo 3 Scarab scenario, Bungie designed all of these options in the environments themselves. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. th you could do the sniper thing. You could ramp off with the ghost. They, they put that ramp there for you to Those be able dull. to do that. Yeah, those you were know. deliberate design they choices. They have all those mongooses riding around in there so that you can also ride around and, you know, shoot the legs of, of the scarab. You know what I mean? Oh, we're talking about the scarab on the storm, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Oh, yeah. And then you can ride, what is it, the elevator up to the top and walk across that path and jump the crane. on. You, yeah. It's like all of these options and gameplay. Those play, are options. Right. And they're built into the game. What people don't understand is when you add enhanced mobility, you limit a developer's control over what you can do. Over a combat scenario. Right. And then you decrease their ability to make encounters like that. It's like they don't well, they don't put a crane there because you could just fly over there. You know what I mean? Well, something something that's very interesting actually is when I went to three four three, that one guy that I talked to that I told you a little bit about that you were kind of a fan of because of his opinions about enhanced mobility. He suggested to me honor rules for Halo 5's campaign uh, that kind of prove his point about how he thinks as a sandbox designer, he's limited by the enhanced mobility. Um, he said that go home play halo 5's campaign on easy difficulty to compensate for the fact that you know because of these honor rules you're going to be pelted from all directions by bullets um so play on easy difficulty you cannot aim down the sights with any guns but the snipers so no br no dmr no carbine nothing like only sniper rifles you can aim down the sights with uh you have to disable your enhanced mobility things in the options menu set your controls back to a classic style you know like bumper jumper or recon or something and basically in play the mission swords of saying helios and just play the entire thing with the honor rules of no enhanced mobility of any kind and no aiming down the sights unless you're using you know snipers and he was like and just notice that suddenly you can s the level design matters the toys that you're finding matter like you know the plasma pistol it's relevant again with taking down shade turrets because you can't right. just aim down the sights from across the map with your assault rifle um right and then yeah and that he's he's right and he works on the game and he knows probably yeah. better than anybody and we just as bystanders who have played the old ones and the new ones we can look at it and go when you have enhanced mobility in your game level design matters less and if you push the boundaries to where you really really design your game around every facet of your mobility options and all of the complexities that it has then you lose all of the accessibility that Halo is known for. Like if you're like, well, you can the, only make that jump if you sprint, slide, jump, thrust, clamber at the last possible second. That's the only way you can make that jump and we designed the level to be that way. Then if that's your overarching level design, you lose a lot of accessibility. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, and and that's ultimately something that he said uh, was internally they recognized that the enhanced mobility had destroyed a lot of the pacing in some of the levels like as a level designer you may carefully craft the scenario where the covenant are entrenched in this position with a like it doesn't fucking matter because you can just fly across the map like superman right and completely destroy them like it doesn't fucking matter right <laughs> you know, the level design doesn't matter in halo 5 and and again like i talked about this in my innovating halo video um without changing its formula you lose the ability to you basically lose all subtlety in your design because like like that example I used, yeah, that's the literally peak range of how far you can go with your enhanced mobility. But all of that space in between that, that range, you, you lose a lot of design um, versatility because you can just basically have free range over that whole 
area, but if you stripped all those abilities back, your level design becomes not only incredibly important, but if you still want to accomplish uh, a player's ability, like if you still want them to be able to get all the way where they used to be able to get, you can add man cannons or you can add gravity lifts. You can yeah. do all of these different things within your environment uh, to accomplish the same thing enhanced mobility can without the downsides that enhanced mobility causes. In fact, in fact, even if you guys want straight from the horse's mouth, uh, an instance of the enhanced mobility kind of limiting creativity, remember, I want to say it was like four months after Halo 5 came out, Quindel Hoyo sent out that tweet to that one guy who was asking about the possibility of teleporters in future maps. And he was like, teleporters don't work in Halo 5. Like we've tried them, we've tested them, they don't play well. That's a restriction because of the enhanced mobility. <laughs> and I don't really know. I don't really even understand it as a restriction. Like, I'm, I'm sure they did play test it and it didn't work. But I don't know how enhanced mobility would screw up teleporters other than... I, I could say, could you imagine like a teleporter and then just suddenly a guy flies through and Spartan charges you and fucks over everybody? Yeah, like, I mean... no way to prepare. <laughs> like, I mean, maybe like they had issues with how momentum and abilities worked while going through a teleporter like what would a ground pound do if it went through a teleporter you know what well, would... you can go you can go into halo 5's forge and try it yourself it works fine the teleporters aren't broken it's that the flow of the map is fucked because at any point five guys could fly through the nearest teleporter and you have no way to to prepare for them right well you know i think teleporters are for, first of all i think teleporters are great i think not not they don't work in halo 5 though not that every match should ability. have them but uh, I'm, I'm well i'm not talking about halo 5 i'm just talking about halo <laughs> no yeah no i i like teleporters as well they shouldn't be in every map right. but teleporters are something that is fun in halo right and you can do you can that's one of those pieces those those tools that you as a developer have that you can use when you're designing play spaces um yeah instead of oh i i can have them teleport here instead of just them sprinting over there or i can have them yeah. fly over there with a grav well, porter remember in halo 5's campaign there's that one part in that sing helios level where it's like it's like we need to get the door open we need to find a thing to scan and it's like this out of place thing that breaks up the combat um but remember the solution to the puzzle is just clamber up there i'm sure like it's 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 up there just clamber like could you imagine how much more fun it would have been to try to find a grav lift to deploy, like having to find something or not making it such a linear thing where there's one way to get up there. <laughs> right. And what you're talking about is the aha moment. It's when yeah. a player discovers something that lets them figure it out. When, when a base trait is used to solve all of these puzzles Dude, and is issues. The aha moment. there is no aha moment then it's like oh gee i wonder if i use this clamber button that i use every three seconds yeah um and that's yeah and, and mm -hmm. this is this is an example and i was trying to figure out how to put it in a video and i'll just i'll embellish it later in a video but i'll use it here see what yeah, some of you guys think when you look at portal 2 and a, a game that is heavily dependent on momentum and speed in a game that does not have sprint because they got that momentum and speed from the environment they use the orange gel i believe and basically what you can do is you can manipulate this orange gel and you can you know guide it with portals to cover areas of the uh, landscape and the environment and when you walk on that you build up speed um and so th that basically incorporates finding momentum and going really fast into the puzzle itself. So you can cover this area and you can run on it. And when you get to the end, you shoot a portal and now you're going yeah. faster and now it launches you out. Well, instead, well, mm -hmm. like what would have happened where instead of them incorporating that idea and that mechanic into the environment itself, what would happen if they just accomplished that via a sprint mechanic? 
Yeah, if you could just sprint to go fast right. at any point. Or like the Halo 5 running down the Guardian sequence that everyone seems to incorrectly think was cool. <laughs> like how much more interesting it would have been if the Guardian, as it was forming and you had to get down it, you could remotely trigger via panels like these... Uh, these conveyor belts that would increase your walk speed when you got on them. And you could use that as a way to jump yourself between platforms and stuff like that. Right, and that's- As opposed to just running and jumping and thrusting. And that part of the map, or map, uh, man, I'm tired and a little sick, so please bear with me. It's okay, we'll we'll probably wrap it up after this. (laughs) That entire section of the campaign, that little moment is a perfect example of basically all style all like no gameplay implications whatsoever like your gameplay is not altered or changed at all it is a call of duty set piece you running down that guardian it it might be cool but you know what would be even more cool is if they built some sort of gameplay mechanic that had to do with you running down that guardian instead it's just a call of duty set piece yeah or like it was so fucking frustrating and it's cool actually because marcus alito on twitter voiced this very thing that halo 5 the issue with it is its coolest moments it robs from the player and puts in either a cutscene or a scripted event that you have to watch and he um brought up specifically the teleporter cutscene thing where you know fire team osiris is trying to chase after chief and they're like going through these teleporter things it's like why the fuck isn't that in the level Oh, like yeah. you could have designed a whole mechanic oh, around yeah. that. And then it's like finding the right teleporters and I don't know. Yeah, yeah. you could do cool stuff like, like some that. kind of timed sequence where the cavern is collapsing and you have to like some kind of memory thing Hell, where you have to jump through the correct you teleporters. You could have turned that into a boss battle if you really wanted to or that, that idea of hopping between teleporters and whatnot. Beating blue team to a certain platform yeah, by being faster than them. Yeah, something like like a Sonic versus Tails race from Sonic Adventure. You could have done that. <laughs> yeah, that's what you should have done. Come on, yeah, Sonic. Pretty much. <laughs> like if Sonic the Hedgehog was a spurt. <laughs> <laughs> You're too slow. Oh my God! Didn't he say that? Yeah. He was like, "Catch up, Tails." Yeah. Oh no! Didn't he always say like, "All right, Tails"? Whenever you'd pass All him or right, something. All right, Tails. <laughs> <laughs> or something like, why are you racing <laughs> or, if you want to lose <laughs> or uh dr robotnik he was like you think you can keep up with me oh, i know goodbye tails i know it's just like this really creepy <laughs> maniacal tails, story. wait for me i know oh man, man that's a great that's... game also if you plug in a dreamcast controller into the player two port tails is controlled there what? is th- really yeah there's technically co-op what yep wait is that okay (laughs) really yeah if um that's crazy like in the sonic levels if you're playing a sonic and tails is with you on those levels if Uh you plug in a player two controller player two controls tails i am googling this 100 percent. and you want to know how i found that out because when Uh i was a little kid i always wanted to play and I wanted to make like my sister or my cousin feel like they were playing. And uh, uh-huh. so, so what I did is like, I was Sonic, obviously, and I'm like, here, you can play as Tails. Um, you know, and I, I didn't really think they were gonna play as Tails. I'm like, screw it, here's a controller. You're not really playing, but go for it. Um, but it worked. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what the hell? You're actually playing? He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a real thing. That's pretty crazy. I, did, I man. discovered it before the internet era. Anyway, That's what a crazy. strange way to end a Halo podcast. Yeah, starting to talk about uh, who do you think that we should get next? Who do I think that you should yeah. get next? That we should, yeah. Huh. Do, do you want to return? Oh yeah, I'm, all, and I'm be always a regular. Down. Okay, I'm always down. Who should we drag forcefully? Hmm. Against hmm. their own will. Hmm. Hmm. What was like the most popular suggestion? Uh, Act Man, but I was thinking Act Man. I don't want to steal thunder from his podcast and that he's my doing. podcast. 
<laughs> and yours and yours even though i'm now stealing you you're like <laughs> right it's just like next episode here's the regular podcast and it's me yeah. you luck and and kelly oh you gotta block that out <laughs> oh shit <laughs> i was thinking i was thinking of i was thinking of probably grabbing luke or Reykjavik, Reykjavik, however he yeah. pronounces his his yeah, fucking or, name or act man who i almost spilled his real name Oops. the active boy i think the he already boy. said his name Oh, if he did, then yeah, fine. I got like halfway through. I was like, Hip. <laughs> yeah, 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 like forceful, <laughs> activate, activate your gag reflexes and like, vomit <laughs> all over your mic to cut yourself off. And I was, I was like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, Alrighty, just like, man, welcome that's... to Podtastrophe, all skulls on. All skulls on, no. on strophy. Yeah, well, yeah, well, we'll for sure have you back on there, and I'm sure yes. any one of those guys would love to Gotta come be back. Better about on, responding to this to show act, too. Act boy, act boy, active men. Yeah, alrighty, man. All right, I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, take care. Yep.